Hi, I'm Vicky from Rock Stars and Royalty. If you know me and you know my designs, you'd know that I love ombre. I love ombre dyeing fabric. Today, I'm going to show you how to do ombre dyeing. I'm going to show you two different colour dyes today. The first one will be ivory, which is the colour of the lace that I'm going to dye, gradually fading into a pink. And the other one will be taking a piece of white lace and I'm going to dye it from black into purple. The black into purple lace I'm then going to use to upcycle a dress for my next Rocked Up Frocks video. So I'm going to dye an off cut of lace black for the bodice. Then I'm going to use this piece of lace and dye it for the skirt. So this is a three metre piece of lace which has scallops on both edges. I'm going to fold it in half and dye both scallop edges purple and fade that into black. So when it's on the skirt it will be black fading down to purple. For the piece of lace that I'm going to dye ivory into pink I folded over the top part that I want to keep ivory and just put it onto a clip hanger and then I'm going to dye this bottom part here. So starting with a bright pink at the scalloped edge, fading up to a paler pink up here. For the black into purple lace, I folded the lace in half edge to edge so both scalloped edges are together. I've then pinned all the scallops and folded it and clipped it onto a hanger so all of my scalloped edges are nice and evenly at the top here and I'm going to start with the black I'm going to dye the black from this folded edge, fading up towards the scalloped edge. Once that's done, I'll move the hanger from the scalloped edge to the folded edge, and then we'll dye the purple from the scallops fading into the black. Dyeing's a bit hit and miss. You can do tests and see how it comes out, and then it can be different when you do a large amount of fabric. So keep an open mind and see what happens. You can always put it back in and do it darker. So let's go dye and see what happens. To dye my lace, I'm using these Jacquard acid dyes, which work brilliantly on synthetics. Check the fibre content of the garment or the fabric you want to dye and buy the appropriate dye for that. A quick Google search should show you the best dye to use. With the acid dyes, I also need to use white vinegar. The acid dyes need to be used warm and I like to keep them heated, so I'm doing it on my stove top in my kitchen. And I use this massive metal pot on my stove. I also use a couple of sizes of plastic bowl, a couple of wooden spoons and a ladle. Make sure these are old ones you don't need to use in your kitchen anymore because they will get stained and you won't want to use them for food again after this. You'll also need some disposable gloves so you don't dye your hands. I've put four litres of water at 60 degrees centigrade and half a cup of white vinegar into my pot. And now I'm going to add just the smallest bit of the pink dye, which is the Jacquard Acid Dye Pink 608. And just you want to just start with the tiniest, tiniest bit and stir it through. I'm not using gloves at the minute because it's so pale. I've made my fabric damp and I'm going to start lowering it in to this really, really pale mix. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's a really beautiful pale, pale pink. And I'm going to dip that right into where I want the fade to stop. And then I'm going to take it out and put a tiny bit more dye in. And then dip it back in again to a slightly lower level. But you need to keep it moving all the time. And that's how you stop getting the lines between the different gradients. You want it to be a really nice, smooth change of colour. I'm going to keep going like this, just putting more in and dipping in less and less fabric every time and keep it moving so we get that nice gradient until we get right down to the bottom and I get it to the pink that I want the darkest part to be. I'm just putting the heat on now just to keep this dye nice and warm. If you decide you want your fade to come up a bit higher, which I think I'd like to, uh, but you've already got your dye mixed really strong, take your ladle and put a ladle of your strong dye into a bowl. I've taken three ladles of my pink dye from my pot. I'm going to water it down with some hot water. I pop my fabric in this one for a minute just to get that pink mist coming up a little bit higher. This can be a really great way to even out any lines you've got in there as well. So I often do this at the end. That's better, I'm happy with that. So now I'm just gonna pop it back into the stronger dye and just make sure I've got the color I want at the very bottom. And I think that looks good. So you can see it's nice and pink at the bottom. 
fading up into that beautiful pale pink higher up and we've got the fade really nicely there's no lines across it between the different strengths of dye so I'm going to give this a rinse give it a wash just with a little bit of washing powder so it doesn't smell of vinegar and put it out on the line to dry for the black to purple dye I'm going to start with the black this time I've got gloves on because this black dye is really potent. It will stain anything. Actually, I'm going to take my scarf off so I don't dye my scarf. I'm going to use exactly the same method. I'm going to start by just putting a tiny bit of black dye into the water and gradually lower it less and less and less as I put more and more dye in. So I'm going to make my fabric wet, put a small amount in and then start getting that graduation. This time I've got eight litres of water at 60 degrees centigrade and one cup of white vinegar. Because we've got more layers of fabric this time, I'm getting my hand in there and giving it a good wiggle just to make sure that the dye is going through all of the layers. Just be careful because the dyes can get quite hot if you're using them on a stove like this. Next bit of black dye going in. Make sure it's really mixed in thoroughly before you put your fabric back in. If there's any unmixed bits, you can get some really strong little dye spots on there. And the black dye doesn't graduate as well as the pink dye does. I don't know why that is. It's the same fabric and the same method. So I will use the putting the ladle into the bowl and watering it down to help eliminate those lines as I go. If you need the height of your fade to be really precise, just mark it with some pins. Sort of an inch or so above where you need to stop. I'm going to rinse my hand under the tap so I'm not dripping dye from my gloves down from the top if I, if I hang it up. I think I'm going to have to use this hand in the dye. And this one to hang it. I'm going to go in with the rest of the tub of black dye now, try and get this as black as we can. And then I'm going to use the bowl to sort out the fade a little bit. Right. That's my whole tub of black, and I haven't got another one, so hopefully it comes out black enough. I'm going to leave this in the black dye for about maybe 15 minutes, and I'm going to keep moving it up and down. I've used the bowl to water down the dye to even out the fade a little bit and I've put some more vinegar in and I've put the heat up on the dye to see if we can get it to go black. But it's still looking quite dark blue at the moment. I'm gonna rinse this, let it dry a bit, and then I'm gonna put the whole thing in purple. So we'll end up with a deep purple at one end and a bright purple at the hem of the dress. While I was dyeing that, I had the second piece of lace that I'm gonna use for the bodice in there as well. So I'm just gonna rinse that out now too, so hopefully it should be about the same color as the fabric for the top of the skirt. It's actually come out darker than I thought it had. It's, it's not black black, but it's a beautiful deep blue black. So I'm not gonna put purple over it. I'm only gonna dye purple up from the other end. So I've taken my coat hanger off, put it on the folded end, and now we're gonna dip this end in the purple. It's doing the same method, gradually making the purple dye darker. So I've made my ends wet, and now we're gonna start putting purple dye in. I'm not gonna start quite as weak as with the others because this is just not gonna show up. So I'm gonna start with a fair amount of it and then make it stronger as necessary. Cool, I'm gonna go straight in and do the whole pot of purple. I'm really happy with how that graduation's looking though. It wasn't completely even, but because we're using such dark colors, it hides a little bit. I'm not even gonna leave it in there for long because I don't want it to get too dark. I'm gonna use my hand to make sure it's gone through all the layers and I think we're done that quickly. Here's our finished dyed fabrics now that they're dry. The pink one fades beautifully from this lovely pastel pink at the bottom, fades really evenly up into the original ivory color of the lace. And here's the black into purple. It's not a black black, it's a lovely deep inky midnight blue black. And then it fades into almost a silvery color before it goes into the purple at the hem. I'm really happy with how that fades come out. Reminds me of Twilight. I hope you found this tutorial really helpful. I hope it's inspired you and given you the confidence to have a go at doing some ombre dyeing. If you're going to dye some fabric that you're going to make up into some clothing, dye it before you sew it. 
if you're dyeing something that's already made up, just try and do a little test of some of the fabric before you dye it. Just be aware that there may be shrinkage. Sometimes different parts of clothing dyes differently. Sometimes the fabric will dye, but the stitching won't. So it's always a bit hit and miss what you're gonna get when you're dyeing something that's already made. But it's fun, have a go and see what happens. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you love my videos and you haven't subscribed already. Your support means so much to me. I'll be back soon with more videos and I'll be back really soon with the rock type frock that I'm gonna use this purple and black lace on. Catch you soon.